Are you on good terms with UFC? Um, Dancing? Wow. Welcome to uh, How He Does Stuff. I'm Howie Mandel. Uh, my co-host, Jacqueline Schultz, is not here. Um, uh, she bought a hamster. And then my guest is not here. It's, uh, but he's going to be here. Uh, Brendan Shop. Brendan, I already, we're way into the show. I'm on to my third question. No, there, we, did, we, where were you? Where'd you go? I was staring at your fish tank. Okay. Anyway, Brendan Schaub, ladies and gentlemen, you are a, uh, a comedian, an MMA, UFC fighter, a football player, an entrepreneur, a podcaster, a dad. Yes, sir. You're like everything. How do you have, how do you have time to do this? I don't, but I'm trying to keep up with you, man. I mean, I thought my podcast studio was cool, and I come here. I'm like an alley cat version of you, dude. I'm a poor man's version of Howie Mandel. No, no. Trying to keep up with No, you. I was really impressed. I, I went and did The Fighter and the Kid the other day, and where you, your digs are uh, pretty amazing and, and pretty convenient for me. You're about three blocks from where I live, and it's... I think that when you watch your podcast, you see this like nice slick set, but it's the whole place. You're an entrepreneur where there are offices and people working in a, it's just, I, I was really impressed. Oh, I and, appreciate it. That means yeah, a lot. Yeah. And I'm more impressed today with you, which will mean nothing to anybody watching this. Nice <laughs> pants. Nice <laughs> pants. I figured you'd, you'd sign off on the black. Yeah, because uh, for those that don't know, and you should check out The Fighter and the Kid, not just my episode, but it's it's always interesting. You and Brian uh, have a, a great uh, repartee. Yes. Is that what it's called in Been French? Doing it for a hot second. Well, didn't he, like he kind of, for me, I knew who he was. Yeah, he was very from famous. From Mad TV. He was very yeah. famous. He kind of discovered you. I mean, he has nothing to do with your fighting, but, uh, right? No, that's fair, especially as far as the comedy scene goes, because I was competing in the UFC at the time, and I moved from Denver to L.A., where, you know, most of my crew is from the Colorado area. That's why I liked him. I knew it. You didn't even say hi to them. Yes, but, I did. Did you? Oh, yeah. Kyle and Seth and everybody, they're, they're, and, and Jenny, they're all uh, Colorado people. Like Aurora, Colorado, or, or like Rich Kid, Colorado? What are we talking about here? Oh, and Jeremy, are you also from Colorado? I didn't know you were from. I knew you knew them. And Jeremy, our, our editor and director. And Arvada and Littleton. Okay. Okay, it's nice over there. That see, the, see, you're not selling that. Uh, you're, no, you're, you're I, I going, used to okay. live there. I used to live there. I know, I'm, but I'm, you moved out because you didn't like it. I you said you didn't like the people of Lyon. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. Uh, yeah, I'm from Aurora. It's a, a little different part, you know, but it's it's nice. It's a tougher area now, you know. You come from a up. tough area? Uh, predominantly black area. I grown up. All my friends were black, and that's why I was. I always wanted to be a comedian as a kid, and my mom would have me watch Saturday Night Live, so I loved uh, stand up and Robin Williams and Jim Carrey and Adam Sandler like my heroes, but in uh, my Howie, neighborhood, see Howie, yeah, uh, yeah, Howie, you know this Little Monsters grew up one of my favorite movies of all time. Okay, Bobby's World, thank you, huge fan, huge fan, thank you. Which we could <laughs> we could redo, we could reboot, reboot Little Monsters, really That'd be fun. That'd be cool. I don't know. I don't know if I want to live under a bed anymore. That wasn't, <laughs> but but I, I was just saying that uh, you're. Uh, we've been jumping all over the place, and that's yeah, how sorry. I. That's how, no, don't apologize. It's me. I have ADHD. Nice pants. Thank you. I did your. I did the fighter and the kid. Yes. And you were wearing knit pants. Yes. Like, like sweater pants. I take some fashion risk. I've always. My first day of first grade, I wore cowboy boots, a bolo tie, and a silk shirt and a cowboy hat. And, and no a, pants. And no pants. That's a risk. Huge risk. And but the first it, it went over well. Went over well in first grade. Now, dressing like that in a predominantly black school, you're going to get bullied. But I, I do it for the fashion. Fashion is pain. I've always been. Did you get bullied as a kid? Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. Is that why you got into fighting? Not at all. Uh, I got bullied, but um, growing up where I, where I did in that predominantly black neighborhood, the way to stick out was sports. So it was a blessing and a curse. It was a blessing where I was kind of the cool kid because I was really good at sports, but I wanted to do stand-up. I wanted to be the silly kid. But that wasn't my path at the time. It was sports. So that's how I... What was your first sport? Football. I, I, I was so serious about football. Were you a big kid? No. 
small kid. I was so serious about football in elementary school because, you know, when you have recess, there's the grass is always wet and I kept slipping. So I wore my uh, cleats to school. So I'd walk around, they'd make fun of me in the halls. I'm like, all right, see what happens at recess. And then my mom- You wore cleats all day long all so you day. wouldn't slip on the lawn. Yep, just to, you know, show off during recess to, to get the job done. When, to show off during recess. But you weren't playing football in recess. Yeah, we were. We had oh. footballs, yeah. That, and you were the only one with cleats, no pants, nope. silk shirt, bolo tie. Cowboy. cowboy hat, scoring touchdowns on these fools. Wow. And then, so when did you start fighting? I started fighting. So I took football pretty far. I went to University of Colorado. Shout out to the Denver kids in there. University of Colorado. Anybody just, in that room go to the University of Colorado? Do you, are you DU kids? No, they were all homeschooled. No. No, there. No one went to college. <laughs> Nobody went to college. Nobody went to. Uh, okay, well, they were homeschooled. Yeah, that's fine. Um, Little yeah, then, you know. Yeah, I went to University of Colorado. I played football there. Then I had a cappuccino with the Buffalo Bills, and I got there, and they're like, "We're all set on slow white guys." And then I came back to uh, Colorado, and I was training jujitsu, stay in shape, and I just had a knack for it, and just started training, training, and then I was training for about a year and a half, and then a training partner of mine, Shane Carwin, who became the UFC uh, heavyweight champion, interim champion of the world, said, uh, I was just training all the time, and I was selling supplements door to door, and he goes, Door to door hey, supplements, do, do like have, creatine and yep, things like that? Yep, door to door creatine door-to-door, guy. Door to door, door to door. Selling supplements is a tough gig. Tough well, door to door, I can imagine, ding dong, who is it? You guys want some vitamins? Yeah, some like, old lady answers, and like, hey, you ever tried creatine? <laughs> you know, it's a tough sell, but your boy, I did all right at it, but that's, the the that all set me up for stand up because the the people skills you have to have that and adapt it it really helped me out. I Did you sell creatine to oh, yeah. elderly women? Oh yeah, creatine, uh, what BSN products, EAS products. Did you uh, as a door to door supplement salesman? Did you ever and single? Did you ever get? Was there a great story about like some older? I wish, man. No, nothing. You, you never got nothing. laid. Never nothing. got laid. I got hit on by some old guy one time. That's about it. An old guy. An old guy. Okay. He bought a lot of creatine. Okay. And um, so, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know what to say about yeah, it. I don't either. This is not your first time in the studio. You were in the studio, uh, Logan. Uh, uh, Good Paul. buddy of mine, yeah. Yeah. He, he does, when he's in town, he'll do his uh, podcast out of this studio. And my son told me that you were on, you were on, podcast yeah i came on his podcast and you know they do their thing it's it's interesting because logan paul he's his demo like he's he's younger than i am way younger his demo is younger i went on there to promote my special at the time i think it was like in april but uh logan you don't talk about businessman entrepreneur like he's he's he doing the dang thing yeah he is I what do you think of, you respect the hustle what about yes. the fighting what about the, the paul brothers are you because you're a professional <clears throat> i was yeah i retired probably 12 years ago at this point but I, I respect it. Again, I respect it. There's a lane for everyone. People, it's easy to hate on Jake Paul or Logan Paul for what they're doing, but they those, hate on them for, but they're so successful. Why would you hate? Well, on that's them? why they hate on them. If oh, they right. were doing bad, no one's going to hate on you because you can't hate on the guy who keeps losing. So for those guys, you know, I uh, tip my hat to them because fighting's the toughest gig in the world, man. It, 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 it was the scariest job I've ever had. I was terrified. And were you terrified? Terrified. Hated it. Hated, hated it, it. Hated every minute of Never it. Never liked it. Never. I'm not an aggressive person by nature. To me, it was just a competition. I hated hurting people. My coaches used to get upset during training because we'd bring training partners in and we'd pay them. And they go, you got, you got to get more physical. You got to get meaner. I'm like, no, I like the guy. What do you want me to do? So it was always, I never had that like that tenacity to like hurt people. It was just not in my nature. Have you ever hurt somebody like really, really bad? In a fight? Yeah. Uh, in professionally, never. I've never really been to many fights outside of the octagon. Professional, no, lives. but professionally, professionally has yes, it? I've knocked some guys out. Um, but besides knocked them, out, I went to a fight. I took my daughter. So my daughter fight? is a is a, a co host here. She can't be here today because she bought a hamster. But the the, the tracks. Pardon me. That makes sense. Hamsters are important. They are. Yes. Are you part of that group? No, I'm not. Okay. So the 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 um, I took her to a fight once because I like boxing. You know, and we saw a guy die. Not in the UFC. No, no, in a boxing match in the Valley at the Sagebrush Cantina. We saw a guy die. They used to have uh, boxing matches in the in the parking lot. Oh, this is back in the day. Like a couple of years ago, a few years oh, ago. Wow. Yeah, they don't have boxing anymore because a guy died. Yeah, you can't, you can't be dying. Have you had a- You're not a, supposed to die. You, well, it happens. Have you, had, have, have you had an opportunity to go to the UFC fight? Yes, I have. Did you like it? I loved it. 
I loved it. I went, I was invited by Fox. It's intense. It, it's really intense yes. and uh, more intense than boxing. Yes. Way more intense. And it's a, a lot more violent than boxing, but I, that's what I liked about it. I think my son's a big fan. Alex, you're a big UFC fan, aren't you? He, he, he gave me a thumbs up and a yes. It's, it's, it's more violent to the, to the untrained eye, but boxing's actually more dangerous for you. Really? Yes. Why would boxing be, you can kick in, in, in UFC, you can kick. It seems like I'd rather be punched than kicked. So here's the thing. So, be, and it's more dangerous because of CT and uh, brain trauma. So in boxing, there you have the, the eight count. You can get knocked down multiple times. When you get knocked down, you get wobbled like that and you see guys fall to the knees and they give them a, you know, the, the 10 count and they get back up and they go, you ready to go? And he goes, yes. You're seeing brain trauma. And then they go, all right, get back in there, get more brain trauma. Then you get knocked down again. Then you give them another 10 count. They go, okay, you good? And I guess get back in there. That's more brain. You're just accumulating brain trauma after brain trauma. Even though it's just punching, you're just getting all this brain trauma. In the UFC, guy gets wobbled. He's going to get finished. It stops. You're not going back out suffering more trauma. So boxing's more Who decides trauma. your wobble, though? You can't get up from getting hit? In the UFC? Yeah. I mean, you can, but I mean, you know, it's like uh, it's like a, a shark in the water. If they smell blood, they're going to finish you off, and the, the ref's going to stop the fight. So you're not accumulating more brain trauma. Boxing's the whole goal of that is you're getting brain trauma no matter what, because you can get rattled. That's a concussion. You can get your bell rung, as they call it, and then you keep keep continuing to fight. So what's the worst? And you don't have to say the guy's name, but what's the worst? injury that you gave somebody have you give somebody have you knocked somebody out of the the whole game like they can't fight anymore because no never no never done that I've, i mean i've knocked guys out i knocked out mirko krokop who he used to be number one in the world he was like a legend i looked up to him when i was in the fight game and we just had this battle i mean he, he he's the reason i have uh, this scars i had like 18 stitches over my eyes he broke my nose shattered my nose completely through uh, with a croatian elbow um, and a I Croatian knocked, elbow. He was Croatian. They call oh, him because uh, yeah, right. But I, the Croatian elbow is not the move. No, no, it's okay. his move. Right. And I learned that the hard way. It right. Completely shattered my nose. But I, I remember. Uh, I, beat I him. love that the fact that a, an elbow goes so deep into your head that you know what country it's from. Yes. Not fun. Right. That, that was a rough night. And I went in that one, knocked him out late in the third round, biggest fight in my career. And he was this huge megastar. Nobody was rooting for me. He's like this fan favorite. And I was getting heckled. People were throwing stuff at me before the fight when I'd walk around town. And this is in New Jersey, for God's sakes. Wow. And um, I remember after the fight, I beat him. And, you know, I won the fight, but my nose just shattered, my eyes bleeding. And I just looked at him. I was like, what are we doing, man? What are we doing? And he looked at me and goes, this is life. I was like, no, 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 no. This can't be. Really? Yeah, I was like, Did you make big be. money for that fight? Uh, I think I made 18 and 18. Then I got a bonus of 50000 But, you know, and this isn't. You know, I'm a humble person, but I make now more in, in a month than I did, you know, getting punched in the face in the UFC. Wow. But you made a lot of money in the UFC. No. No. Never made a lot. It depends. You know, money, a lot of money is all relative. For for being ranked, I think, number nine in the world at the time, I was maybe making 200000 a year, depending on how many times I fought. Are you on good terms with UFC? Um, With the majority of the staff, yes. The fighters, absolutely. The uh, owner? The, with Dana White, it's like this love hate relationship. I have no animosity towards him. Life's too good. We've both made it. Right. I feel like I'm Andy Dufresne from Shawshank Redemption. Right. And he's the warden. Nobody roots for the warden. But um, we're. Co I have no issues with him. But also, he's in, with the other show. You know, most of my podcasts are comedy podcasts, so we don't really talk about it. But on I have a shop show where it's just straight MMA. Right. He makes, you know, a lot of mistakes or controversies. So I have to talk about it. Be like, oh, you you don't like Dana. No. Oh, I, I, I saw that. I, I read that. I have no issue with Dana. I have yes. zero issue with Dana. He took Did a stab at me just a few months ago, called me an idiot for some take I had. All right, cool. I bring that on stage, you know? Because you cool. commented on his controversy, right? Yes. And he got did he get did he come back at you for that? No. No, no. No. He he he's he's done it before and I lit him up. I mean, I, I do stand up for a living, man. It's not going to end well for him. Uh, you were so you were a fighter, and you met Joe Rogan, and is, that's how you met Joe and uh, Brian. And I met then, Joe because he moved to Denver at the time. I was living out of Denver, and he was commentating the UFC. So I met Joe in Denver, and then him and Brian Callen are best friends. Right. And then I met Brian, and then we would all just go to dinner. We go to these dinners, and I'd make them laugh. And Rogan, I was fighting at the time. Rogan's like, "Dude, you're hilarious. You got you should do stand up." 
And he deep down he didn't know like my heroes are stand up comedians and my mom's always wanted me to do stand up, and I'd go to the the comedy works in Denver like that was the goal. But not, and I told and he did this live on air. He's like, dude, I'm telling you, get an act together. Do st- you can do stand up. I was like, no, I can't. He's like, I'm telling you, get an act together, man. You can do this. Joe or Brian? Joe, right? And Brian actually told me not to do it at first. Brian told me not to. The Why? biggest, just because he knows how tough it is. He, he was like, you're looking at ten the, years. How right? tough stand up is? Yes. Compared to just getting winning and getting 18 stitches over your eye and a Croatian elbow deep into your head. Uh, d- different though, right? Different skill set. So, you know, you grew up, you're always funny, right? You're, you've always been the funniest guy. I was funny, but I was the funny guy in the locker room. Like every uncle's funny at the barbecue. Right. You can take that funny uncle at the barbecue, put him on stage, and he, right. it's not going to go well. It, it takes a while to but get But not that. going well in comedy doesn't hurt as much. It I mean, doesn't. You can take it hurts a few yourself. L's. Yeah, yeah, it hurts. It hurts, but you can at least. In the UFC, if you lose a big fight, you're letting it, you, it, the the valleys are so low and the peaks are so high. There's no in between in fighting. It's either the highest high or the lowest lows, which helps me with stand up now. Because stand up, let's say I bombed my first show in Springfield uh, last weekend, I have a second show to redeem myself, or I can do a spot around LA and redeem myself. In fighting, you get knocked out, especially in today's world. Rematch. You're, you're seen on social media over and over. But that you can knock, ha- you can do a rematch. You can do it sometimes. Sometimes. But you got to think about that for probably six months. You get suspended for six months, so six months till you can redeem yourself. Stand up. If I do a spot tonight at the Improv or Ice House, I bomb. I can redeem myself. I'll drive over to the Laugh Factory. Are you loving comedy? Absolutely love it. I was born to do it. Absolutely. Do you, what it. do you like better? Do you like po- uh, stand up comedy or podcasting? Uh, stand up comedy. I mean, I love podcasts because it, it it's like this ecosystem. They all feed each other. So I got my chops and my ten thousand hours in podcasts, trying to keep up with Theo Vaughn, Chris D'Elia. You know, Santino, Callen, Rogan, Joey Diaz, all these great comics. So being around that, trying to keep up with it, it's like my training camp for stand-up. And you, uh, what about controversy? Controversy seems to follow you a lot. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. So you don't stir I, I it up. I, I, no, I hate, notice I, I never entertain it. I don't like to entertain it. I don't, people will take shots at me nonstop. It'll get them views. But notice, you'll, it's very rare you'll see me entertain that. I, I, I don't like that's I don't like negativity. I'm a positive person. So I, I don't there's enough negativity in the world. So I don't hate anybody. I have no issues with anybody. They may have issues with me. And I get it, especially when it comes to the stand up world, because I came from UFC where I had a fan base. I come over to to comedy and I'm I'm getting spots at the store, you know, I'm getting spots at Laugh Factory and Ice House and then I'm touring and there's comics who's been grinding for ten years and can't get it going. I understand that. I one hundred percent understand and expected that. So whenever they take shots at me, I'm like, I totally get it. I wish I could help you. I totally get it. Let me know if I can help. I don't entertain it. But you've been getting a lot of controversy even in the podcast world, right? Sometimes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it just, it, it, I think it comes with the territory, you know, with, with what I do and being in comedy and then also still having my toe in MMA. Like those worlds, especially with social media these days, people make it bigger than it is. Um, I just, I try to zone it out. I'm, I'm like a, a racehorse with blinders on, you know? What is the goal? What do you want to do? That's a great question. I know. <laughs> Let's hear a great answer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, you know, I don't, if I could be a fraction as successful as you are, man, I'd be happy. But, you know. Um, what is success? Great question. I don't. Another great question. Yeah. Uh, success to me would be doing theaters so I don't miss uh, any of my son's sports so, you know, he's a big uh, athletic kid. So when he starts playing like real football, I don't want to miss those Friday nights. Is that what he's Saturday. is that what he's uh, heading toward football? He gravitates towards football and jujitsu. He's very good at both. Are you not concerned about you were just talking about head CT. injuries? Yeah. No, because again, with the media, they make CT this huge deal. Uh, think how many people have played football in North America. Think how uh, the generations of football, how many people you know have CT? I don't know. They're saying, when I read about it, a good portion of those people have. I don't think so. You don't think so? I don't think so. Of, of the, the millions and millions of people that play every year. See, I, you're saying millions and millions of people. I'm always fascinated when I go to a game. I love the NFL. When I go to a game, you know, there's 30 people on the field, and I think so many millions of people and kids have tried out and played for it, but who ends up professional? That's who ends up playing are. the? That's how good they are. Yeah. So they put, so the amount of people that end up playing in college and then for the league is pretty minimal, and the amount of 
head trauma you hear about is not that minimal compared to those numbers. It kind of is minimal, though, because can, can, you can name a few outliers who have had CT problems that we know of. That we know of. That we know of. Right. But yeah. I, you just know that getting hit that hard, that not way, that's, it's not healthy. But what's the alternative? Just not play football? You'd rather not Stand have football? Up. Stand up. You got to teach your kid comedy. <laughs> True. Yeah. Yes. But think, but here's the other thing. Think of comedy. Like, if anybody told you the odds of anything, you, you probably wouldn't try anything. Is if your kid big? Yes, my kid. Yeah, he's big. Very large kid. How old is he? He's six. Wow. Yeah, he's and six. he's already considered big. You're not married, right? Are you married? I'm married, yeah. Oh, you are married. Yeah, yeah. I thought you were yeah. engaged. No, no, sir. You're two, married. Yep, two, two boys. Kids, two boys. How old's the, the young? Six and three. My six son will turn seven in uh, two weeks. And and you told me the other day, I cut this out if you don't want to talk about no. it, but you're making a girl. Yes. Yeah, with uh, in vitro. But my girl, I, I'd have 10 kids. I've, it's the best thing I've ever done. I love being a dad. That's why. Do you like, well, you're kind of like a, a like a, a bigger white Nick Cannon. You want to make a lot? Uh, not Nick Cannon style. Okay. I, I want it with one lady. Nick Cannon just wants to spread a seed all over. Right. You, know, like a, you like want a it, your man. seeds all over one lady. Yes. Okay. Just seeds in one area. Oh, not, not never, not, never on the face. No, never. 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 We don't want to waste it. We want kids here. Okay. So, the only reason that you have sp the only okay, go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'd love ten kids, but she, you know, her pregnancies are tough. She's like, I'm only getting pregnant one more time. Okay. I'm only going to do it if we can guarantee a girl. I'm like, you can't well, guarantee you can't a girl. Guarantee. That's the big man doesn't work like that. And she's right. like, well, no. And her, she's in this mom's group. My son's uh, friends at school. They're like, oh, try in vitro. You can guarantee a girl, and they can. So, what do you mean they can? They can guarantee it. So they take the, they see how, how fertile she is. They take right. her eggs, right? And then they take my sperm, and then they, you know, fertilize Good. the eggs and go, all right. And my girl's suit, you know, she's Mexican, super fertile. So she had ten eggs. Like out of the ten, six are girls. So they can guarantee a girl. So I'm trying to convince her now. Wait, you already twins. know, like before, oh, yeah. before the eggs are fertilized, you know that it's a girl. Yep. They have the science now. You can do girls, get rid of uh, deficiencies. It's nuts. Nuts. Well, then if there's nuts, oh, there there's girls. Nuts. There's not girls. Yeah, there's no. So, and you wouldn't just like have, um, so you're guaranteed a girl. Guaranteed. When, when is this girl coming? Uh, my girl, she's taking the shots now to set everything up. So what are we in February? So she'll be pregnant by early March. With a girl. With a girl. Guaranteed girl. That's like Frankenstein. Yeah. I didn't know. I'm old, so I didn't know that you can say, okay, we're going to go make a girl now yeah. in a lab. And they can get rid of all deficiencies, all sorts of You're things. You're saying deficiencies. Yes. Getting rid of the deficiency makes it a girl? No. Like a man are deficient. No. No. It's like uh, if, if there's underlying, uh, you know, like... Um, I'm trying to think of some. They can get rid of allergies. It's nuts. They, if they can see no nuts, it's, it's a nut allergy. It's nuts. No, but the nuts are what created it. But they can get rid of certain certain issues that run in your family. So they can make a perfect child, uh, a perfectly healthy female. And this is what they do. They go, all right. Whatever. Are you picking hair color? You can't do that yet, but they're headed that way. But okay. with Casper and all that stuff, uh, is it Casper or CRISPR? Do you know what I'm talking about? No. No, nobody knows. Casper's a ghost for me. Used to be, but that with I think it's CRISPR. Who are with, you looking at? You're looking at I'm five looking at the, people from I'm, Colorado who never went to college. Why are you the, looking to looking them? I'm looking at the staff of 19 people to see if anybody knows CRISPR, but no one went to college. Oh, so if you good. put a, a, a fertilized egg in a CRISPR, it comes out the perfect woman? Oh, that guy knows what's up. Well, he, tell me what, what they're saying. What What is it? Who are you? I'm Kyle from Colorado. Yeah. Okay, okay, Kyle from Colorado. What is the CRISPR? CRISPR, yeah, it's exactly what he's talking about. They're researching how to do all the specific genetic mutations or augmentations to make a perfect child. So eye color, skin color, height, everything, body fat. It's getting dicey. Yeah. Uh, penis size. Yeah. On a girl. Sure, sure, sure. Wow. Sure, yeah. So what are you trying to make? Tell me the perfect girl. <laughs> what is the perfect girl? I mean, just a healthy baby at this a point. A healthy man. baby That's all girl. I want. That's because yeah. you have two boys and a girl, two and then you're going to stop there. I mean, I'd like to keep going, but no, my, wife, my, my wife's a hater, so we'll see. She's That's a hater a, that, of pregnancy. She, yes. She, Does she have a rough pregnancy? Yeah, she gets really sick. So I'm telling her, let's just do twins. Let's just not, If you're only doing it one more time, Right, if it's twins. rough for you, why don't you push through, through two through there? Let's do it, you might as well. You are so sensitive, and that's wonderful what you're able to Thank you, sir. give to her. She's had a rough pregnancy where she just pushed out one little guy. Let's do two. And then another little guy. You said, hey, I hear you. 
why don't we ingest you with two babies at once? Yep. So you'd only be doubly as sick. Yes. It would be doubly as hard. What was her problem? She got sick or? she? You know how some uh, women just have bad pregnancies? She's always sick, throwing up nonstop. None right. of the medications. So a twin ought to help that. Yeah. I love that. We'll see. How long have you guys been together? Shoot, almost 10 years now because we started dating when I was in the UFC and she did, she worked for the UFC. She was UFC Telemundo, like the Spanish. I know what tele, I understand yeah, Telemundo. You I, you know, I but know. what did she do for, was she the commentator? No, she was like the in locker room reporter. Like we do post interviews, stuff like she that. She would be a young, they are usually put young, beautiful women in yes, the locker rooms. Correct. And did you, was she in your locker room? For? No, because I didn't speak Spanish. I was there doing a uh, guest appearance for the UFC, and she walked in. I'm like, who the hell is that? And then I started talking to her. She was like, you know, I'm not allowed to talk to the fighters. Like, I'll get fired. And I was like, oh, cool. How Wait, why it? would she be in the – so she wasn't allowed to talk. She was just in the locker room. Well, she's no. not allowed to, like, date fighters, so, like, talk as in date. Talking and, and, and dating. Yeah, and I was like, okay, well, how much are they paying? And she told me, I went, here's the deal. If you go on a date with me and the UFC finds out, I will pay your salary for the next three years. That's a beautiful move to go, just listen, I know you're not allowed to date, but here's some cash to go out with me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I guarantee cash is a beautiful thing. Nothing says to a woman. No, I'm not Hugh Hefner. It was like, here's here's a insurance policy. If you lose your job because you're talking to me, I'll cover it so you don't have to worry about it. And, and you also, say you weren't talking because you don't speak Spanish. Does she speak English? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. But Spanish is a first language. So is my kids, too. Oh, that's fantastic. So they can all have a conversation. You don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Oh, they just about. talk shit about me. I have no clue what they're talking about. It's is she still working? Me. Does she still do that? No, full-time mom. Full-time mom. Full-time mom. Yeah, because it's rough for her. Yeah, and the UFC mm -hmm. fired her. No, I'm just kidding. They didn't. The, and she, uh, so she met you. In the, you think about these women going into locker rooms, because I've heard about it more in, in uh, baseball and football. The, the, guy, like she, the guys would be the, not dressed. Uh, in the UFC, it's not like the NFL. In NFL, you have 53 guys in a locker room, you know, and they're in the showers. You can't tell guys, don't go in the shower. So you, you, I think NBA, NFL is a little different. But now, especially in the culture, and uh, I'm sure they tighten things up. They probably have to stay outside the locker room now. Oh, okay. And uh, does she love the fact that you left UFC because she was obviously a fan and that she worked and she likes that you're doing stand-up now? Yeah, I think she likes it for a variety of reasons. Because like you said, when, when on Fire and the Kid, when we asked your wife what makes the marriage last, because you leave so much. Yeah, I'm break. not there. So now I'm doing touring. Yeah, I leave all the time. So that, that helps. Do you like me? Yeah, you're great. Yeah, because see, because we spend very little time there. <laughs> no, but I was on your podcast, yeah, yeah. and that was like an hour. That's true. You were on my podcast an hour, and we've spent absolutely no other time in our entire lives yeah. together, yet you like me. And we, now we have a That's time the beauty together. of both of us. Yes. We, you will love us to not spend a moment with us. Yes. Is that your thing? Yes. Do you find you, that people are annoyed by you? Because people are annoyed by me. Uh, they, I don't know if they're annoyed by me. I know I get annoyed. Like like the pandemic was tough because you're constantly around somebody all the time. I don't care how good a friend you are, or something. There's it, you're gonna get on each other's nerves. You need your space. Oh, my wife hated me just to even. She go, "What are you doing in the kitchen?" And I eating, yeah. Yeah. but she didn't want me around. Yeah, same. And she's not here today. And you didn't bring your wife. No, man. No. And that's how we're still married. That's why you're still married. Yes. Um, does she come on the road with you ever? No, never. Never. Uh -uh. And you go on the road just about every weekend, right? No, especially with the kiddos now, especially my six-year-old knows when I'm leaving. So now I try to limit it to two times a month, or begin of the month and end of the month, so I'm not gone so much. But no more than so – every now and then I'll do three weekends a month, but never four. Do you two, like two, two, two minimum, three maximum. But you like staying here and working and doing the podcast. Do you like hosting? You like you're you like hosting television. You've been doing television too. Yeah, yeah. I've done a bunch of television. Um, you still working for Bravo? No, no. Left Bravo. Um, it was interesting because I, I, I left E because I used to do the pre and post shows for like the Grammys and uh, Oscars and stuff like that. And the Grammys were on last night, and I was we were watching the pregame stuff that show I used to do. Right. So, yeah, I can't believe I used to do that stuff. It was a great experience. But great experience. you left on your own, or I left on my own. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Um, I think, especially at the time, I was just, uh, I was getting busier in podcasts and stand up. I really wanted to focus, you know, stand up's as tough as it gets. So I really wanted to focus on that. That was taken away from other stuff that I owned. And I, I just, I didn't know the ceiling. On, like the ceiling on that, I thought was, I don't know where to go from that with that, you know? So I've asked you two, what you claimed were great questions, neither of which you've answered. Which ones? Which one do you want? What do you want to do? Where do you want to go? Where do you see yourself? Yeah. What's the next step? That's the one. 
Let's yeah, answer that. I mean, where I want to go, where I see myself, the goal. I, I, I never see goals. Like Rob Derdick, a good buddy, good buddy of mine, he was on my show Fight Campaign. He came to the studio right when we built it. He shoots it right next door. He shoots ridiculous. Yeah, he's the right, best. Right I, next you know, door. I've been on there more than anybody else. I love that more show. More than Rob. More. Well, Rob might have me beat, but right. as far as guests goes. Okay, good. I guess Chanel's on there and Steelo, but outside that guest-driven, I've been on there more times. I love Rob. And Rob comes uh, I don't know if you know Rob, but he's he plans his entire day out to the second. Not only that, he could tell you what percentage of his life is spent on each thing. He is he is the motivator. That guy is the motivator. He is if you if if you ask me where I want to be, I want to be where Rob is. Rob is got it down to a science. So he says ridiculousness, which got ordered for seven hundred and fifty more episodes, Correct. takes up he said something like uh fifteen percent of his life. Yes. Which you would think is for most people, you would think is most of his life. But no, he's the king of entrepreneurial he maximizes his time. He, he'll even have scheduling like family time. It'd be like yeah. thirty minutes. I'm like thirty minutes with the kids, Rob. Come on, Doc. You know. Well, they make appointments. But that's how he does it. Yeah, yes. they, get, they get a book appointments. Is that a play date? No, it's a meeting. Yeah, it's a meeting. We're gonna yeah. sit down and talk about my business. So no, that that's your goal. Uh, he came and he asked me the same thing. You successful guys asked me the same thing. Like, what's the goal? I told Rob, I'm like, I I don't I don't think that way. I, don't, I just go. I just do it. I don't think. I just go, and I trust my instincts. And with, I told Rob, I said, right now I'm I'm a this th what's called Thick Boy Studios. Like Thick Boy Studios, thick it's a thick airplane. It's just getting off the ground. Let me get to cruising altitude level. Let me get to Wi-Fi, ten thousand feet, and then me look down and go, okay, here's the goal. Because right now I'm moving a million miles an hour. How old are you? Uh, Thirty-eight. Your kid, same age as my daughter. Oh yeah. Yeah, my daughter Jackie Schultz, who does the podcast with me. Yeah. When she's not tending to her hamster. Her hamster's more important than the show today. Brand new hamster. She says it's a little nervous, so she didn't want to leave it. Yeah. That makes it, sense. It does. Anyway, um, she, uh, do you, so w w do you live in the moment? Is that what you're saying? There's no plan? You're just, I know you say you're just taking off. It seems like your life was like that. You know, you got into fighting, but then as a fighter, you didn't think you were going to be a comedian. Then you got into comedy or you got into podcasting yes you guys got into podcasting pretty early yeah fire kids been going almost 11 years now before everyone and their aunt had a podcast and now you know there's no barrier to entry so now it's just blown up blown up but having been there that long you kind of established roots like nobody else is it good it's probably great money it's good money yes yeah, yeah I, I, i'm not making great money doing this really? but I, I don't care about money i don't care about money for this i do this because i love this no, because you guys have, uh, who started five, six years ago, have like planted all the, you know, it, it, I think, no, he got it. I was saying the only person I know that doesn't have a podcast is my landscaper, but he, he has, he has one. one. He does have one. On ficuses? Oh, you listen. Yeah, I listen. So I don't listen because I'm jealous, <laughs> but he, he listens. He, he gets more downloads. Yes. <laughs> but I, I asked that to Brian. I said, uh. I said, as successful as Howie is, why the hell does he do podcasting? Because I love it. You, that, you, that's why I told him. I said, it, it has to be it just as a passion. For well, it. I'm interested. Like, My fuel in life is curiosity. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in you. I like yeah. sitting. Where else can I just sit down and, like, I met you the other day yeah. through Brian, and Brian was on. And where else can I? I'm interested. I've, I've been following you. I watch your stuff. I watch, and you know, I'm, I live online. Yeah. And I knew who you were. But where can I sit down and talk to you? And not only that, spend quality time with my daughter. She's not with her hamster. <laughs> yeah, I get that. That would be the only reason you would do it at your level, you know? Yeah. No the money. only reason. No you money. just enjoy it. I'm not making any money. You make a lot of money with doing podcasts. I'm not. No, I, I, I mean, compared to you, I don't think so. I mean, compared no. to America Got Talent money, probably not. Compared to podcasters and stand-up, yeah. But it's to me, like, money's all relative. There's, like, I think that's one well, of Well, you the, said you were making 200000 as a UFC fighter, and you didn't think that was a lot. No. So money's relative. Go ahead. Money's yeah. relative because there's there's levels to it. I think if you would ask me 10 years ago, I'd say, oh, a million dollars is a lot. Now, you know, the perspective I have now, that's not a lot, you know? Cause you look well, you at, live in L.A., a million dollars doesn't even buy a house, really. No, not even close. Yeah. No. But you didn't grow up with money. Did you grow up with money? Not at all. Not at all? Not at all. Did you, grow, you talk about your mom a lot. Did you grow up with a single mom? No. I, my dad's great. Grew up with a super strict dad. He's where I got my work ethic from, which is, I think, the only reason I have any success is my work ethic. I don't think I'm the most talented guy, but when it comes to work ethic, I'll put it up against just about anybody. What your dad do? My dad was, uh, he, he created... Um, at the back in the day, we grew up super poor. I'll never forget this. And then he created this um, 
email, security email that the government and the banks use, a high encrypted email. He's a computer programmer. And uh, I just remember he sold it and he jumped around on the phone, turn around. I remember this is how old it was. The cord was going around him. And then the next day, he uh, brings pictures of three houses. I get emotional talking about it. He brought three pictures of houses. And he goes, which one do you guys like? And I was like, what? Because we didn't have money. And I was like, they look like mansions. And at the time, you know, they were mansions. And I looked at it. And I was like, I like that one. then, shoot, two days later, he pulls up to the house. He goes, go pick out a room. Are you yeah. fucking kidding me? Mm -hmm. That's an amazing story. Great story. So he sold the company. He sold the company. Yeah, wow. Self-made, self yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, great guy. He's also a, a fighter. He, isn't he a jujitsu? He's got a black belt? Uh, taekwondo, which I don't count, but me and him argued over it. You don't count? Not taekwondo. My daughter, who is not here, she's with her hamster, has a black belt in taekwondo. Everybody does. What do you mean everybody does? It's, it's not hard. I mean, I think you can get a black belt in taekwondo under two years. Which is, I'm not taking anything away from, but compared to jiu-jitsu, average time to get a black belt is 10 years. I bet my daughter can beat you up. I bet so, too. So, and then did your dad retire? Nope. Built a, another startup and went went from there and just continues to do it. Now he runs his uh, business now where they do similar stuff. And, you know, he's an entrepreneur. That's where I get it. Are they proud of you? I'm not sure. What do you mean? I mean, how, I mean they don't tell me. That's what. That's how you would be sure. Do they, did they come to all the fights? They, they never miss, you know, I played in uh, University of Colorado when we were good. They're, they're getting better now. They have Deion Sanders as a coach, but I played in Big 12 championships, played in the Big 12. My dad and brother never missed a game my entire college career. They would drive to Miami. They'd drive to Oklahoma, Texas. They never missed a fight. I fought in Brazil, fought in Canada. I fought all over. They never missed a fight. Fought in Toronto, right? Fought in Toronto. Yeah, Big fight in Toronto. That, that's my hometown. UFC 165, yep. yeah. Fought at the, was it the Bell Center there? Is yes. That yep. Fought wow. the Bell, jumped on the cage at the Bell Center. Wow. Um, they never missed a fight. My dad's seen me do stand-up twice, maybe. Yeah. Why? I don't know. I I, I don't I don't know. I, I think, for, I don't know. They saw the special on YouTube. They, he's, I don't know if my dad saw that. He saw, I, my first special was on Showtime, and then my dad didn't come to the shooting, which was a big deal for me, the taping of it. It was in San Diego at the Spreckles Theater. I shot two of them. He didn't come to that. And the next week he comes see his grandkids. And I was like, I wonder if he's going to bring up the special. And then we're walking uh, at Century City Mall. And he goes, oh, I forgot to ask, how'd your, how'd your speech go? How did you? And I was like, I don't do TED Talks. The he doesn't know that you're a stand-up comic? Uh, he knows. I just don't, you know, I don't, I don't know if he takes it serious. I don't know. Are you fucking kidding me? Now, my mom loves it. Doesn't miss anything I do. Are they married? No. Got oh. divorced when I was like six. Wow. So you did you grow up with your mom? No, both of them. We, we split time. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday with my dad. Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, mom. You have siblings? I have an older brother. He's my tour manager. Oh, really? Yeah. But he's a, but he, by day, he's a, he's a computer programmer. He's, smart. Make it the, he's smart like my dad. Wow, by day. And then at night, he's a tour manager. You make it seem like it's a superhero. Yeah. Like Clark he's Kent, by day. And then he puts on a cape. And it, So do you guys, that's that's weird working with you. Well, I work with my family, yeah. I was going to say. Yeah. So do you guys, you get along, you're obviously Now close. we do. Grow, growing up, it was it was, it was was uh, toxic. Growing up, you know, he was very violent. He was violent. Super violent. You're the UFC fighter. I know. Was he a fighter? Uh, growing up, he was. Got suspended, you know, multiple times, got got caught stealing like he was the bad kid would just beat me up i was terrified growing up yeah wait he beat you up is he stronger stop uh is he the, bigger than you uh, at the time he was yeah i was a late bloomer i didn't get big to like uh freshman year of college i graduated now it might be big to some people i graduated high school at 6 2 180 wow i graduated high school at 4 11 89 yeah. pounds yeah yeah so i was uh i didn't even bloom I don't think I, blo I, I, well, I bloom now. Never got I, the I got another after school. I got a, after I finished school, I didn't go to college and I don't have a GED. That's why I get along with everybody from Colorado that, that I'm with. Co college is overrated. You just get debt, you know, unless you're. I don't believe in college, to be honest with you. Now, you know, as I get older, I don't. With my kids, unless they're super gifted in a sport and get a scholarship, I probably advise against it. You're just going to get debt. Unless you know what you want to here's, do. Here's, here's and, my feeling. And like major yes. in like engineering there or you, you want to be a lawyer, you're going to have to do that stuff. Right. But outside those few traits, you don't need it. Communications. A lot of people are in communications. Because it's easy. Because you're lost. Yeah. Maybe you learn. Maybe it's a good social 
implementation. It's the first time you're like out of the house maybe, and then you learn to get along kind of on your own, but you're not really on you're your own. You're not really on your own. You're still relying on your parents. But the thing is, is they don't teach about, you know, buying your first house or, or, or stuff you really need to know, investing your money, you know, stocks. Like they don't teach you really, really life skills. Do you invest? Yes. What do you invest in? Are you in uh, Bitcoin? Uh, I was. I have a, my business manager does the investing, but yeah, we'll take some chances. Some Were you stuff. in FTX? Uh, no, no, sir. My, my, my thing's real estate. Okay. Yeah. I love real estate. Me too. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah. Real estate creates more millionaires than anything else. Is that true? Fact. I have not read that, but I, I believe that. Yeah. More than oil. More than oil. Yeah. Wow. Do you know that? You're just saying. No, that? look it up. Look it up. Look it up. Somebody look it up. I, le I learned that from my papa. Now maybe my dad's full of shit, but that's what he told me. Well, he doesn't know what you do. He wanted. He didn't. He missed your speech. He missed my speech. So he's like, so that's the guy. Is there more millionaires from? Uh, we don't. What are we looking up? <laughs> that's somebody from Colorado. <laughs> yeah, that was some more more Colorado. So, wait, forget it. And real we, estate we in Colorado's. Boom. I'm ready. What? I was. I'm ready now. Where were you? Where were you a minute ago? There was Jen? a lot. Of, there was a lot of talking back here. About what? Ross, is, uh, Ross, is, Ross is here. Oh, do you know Ross? Is he from Colorado? No. Ohio. Ross oh, who? The, uh, Ross Smith. Yeah. He's oh. a Snapchat guy. But he's he wanted it. He was going to bring, because uh, I said you were on, and he was going to bring a, a strength test thing. Mm. Well, he's late. Uh, do you have a good grip, a strong grip? I, f I don't know. I think so. You wanna, do you want to test his grip? I, mean, I haven't done it a hot second. He, he was going to bring, because I said that you were on, he's a big fan. He's, a, he's probably one of the biggest guys on Snapchat. And he was going to, he travels with his grandmother and uh, his friend. Is, is Snapchat still, still big? I don't, I don't know the, the lay of the land. I know TikTok's getting big. What, what would you say uh, uh, Ross makes a month on Snapchat? What would you think Ross makes? Oh, come here, come here. The he's asking. because I think I heard him say what? seven. He's getting a mic on. He's putting a mic on. But someone said $7. Seven dollars. What would you make a month on Snapchat? He he has a thing. Hi, Granny. That's How Granny. And what Ross? What would you make on Snapchat a month? No, honest. Oh, look. He said he was going to come in, and they were going to. You're going to compete. Sit sit beside him. Come What's up, brother Brendan? Good to see you, man. Brendan. Come on in. Come on, Granny. And of Canadian, right? Hey. Okay, so we're testing some grip strength? Yeah. Is that your Ferrari out there? Uh, yeah. He has a Ferrari. He makes good money. He does speeches, <laughs> fighting, <laughs> speeches. and podcast. Podcasting. I'm you know, test, Brandon? Test, test, test. I'm doing yeah, a speech in Naples next week. I uh, know some of his friends. You know his friends? Yeah, some of the comedian guys. Who do you know? We know Theo. We know, do you work with uh, Adam Ray at all? Adam Ray, yeah, I know Adam really yeah. well. Adam's great. Uh, who else do, you know? do the grip. Oh. Let's see. Let's. What? We have cameras everywhere. You got to sit down though. You're blocking. Yeah. Get, get. I'm getting. Yeah. You, you, uh, Come on in, buddy. So far, only one person's beat me though, which I don't even have good grip strength. Let's see. Do your. Do you. You grip. You go first. You got one hand. Just and can I? Can, you, but I can point it down. You right? can gun it, but and you I, can't I, use I your can, other hand. I can hold my wrist. No. Why? Why is that cheating if he's holding his wrist? wrist? That's he's still squeezing. If the other I hand have, is Everybody here. has tried it without the hold. So but I don't think consistency, oh, right? Well, we can do it. You can hold fine, your wrist. We'll do it. Okay, fine. Go ahead. Ready? Yeah. Oh my gosh, he's got the leg squeeze and everything. What do you mean the leg squeeze? It's a, how does that help his grip? Holy what is his grip? Shit. What is it at? Really I'm good. Like, hold it to the camera. Really good. 160. 160. <laughs> do you know what that even means? No clue. That's pounds. 160 pounds of pressure shit, you had with your grip. Like Go ahead. You could do it that way too. Go I, ahead. Uh, he's not a small guy. Okay. And you know, this helps for stand up. Yeah. Oh, it's worse for me. Pull, pull it. <laughs> 125. 125. We're just showing you how strong Sheesh. he is. All right, Granny. Here comes oh, the boy. Yes. Oh, boy. Brittle you can, you can hold your wrist you and you can put hand. it between your oh, legs. My, like, yeah. like this? Yeah. Like Brent? Yeah, just yeah. go for it. Like go this? for it. Like this. Okay. Oh, oh is that like 190? One. Oh, you're good. She's at 200. <laughs> She's at 200. <laughs> what is she at? A whopping 27. 27. And now? All right. I might not be that. I'm a little nervous. I have what? a whole other strategy, though. I I'm call this up. the windmill because we're making electricity. What? You're making electricity. You're not doing uh, any. Uh, 
Oh, not Let bad. Let me try it. I want to see how tough it is. Myself right now. You're Brandon. You really do you oh, work? How often do you work out, Brandon? Uh, at least three times a week. But I, I used to just ride bikes. And what does that have to do with your uh... grip? Because yeah. you, you're like this. Your grip gets good on the bike because you're changing gears and oh, the brakes. Yeah. Like and I'm going down. Too. It's always yeah, I deadlift. Mm -hmm. But usually I just ride bikes. 87. I'm stronger than you. I'm stronger than you, Granny. Not good. No, I could beat the crap out of you, Granny. That's Elder. I don't like you. What? It's going to get worse as you keep going. Really? I want like 50 or 60, but damn, I only got 126. We got a new champ here. Well, you know, he's. We got a new champ here. No, we know. I hear. We heard. It's fantastic. What did I win? Uh. I don't know yet. I just wanted to say how strong you are. Even out with her. How, honestly, <laughs> be yeah, honest. You don't have to say your earnings. Sit down. But in right. Snapchat, a month, what can one earn? Because I'm, 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 I'm unfamiliar with the space. So Snapchat's still big because I know it used to be massive. And then TikTok came along. Well, yeah, Snapchat's getting big. Well, we have a big TikTok too. But is that what you do? TikTok? Or uh, He's mostly or on YouTube and uh, no, we do TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter. We we monetize those. Yeah, I don't, so I don't know if we're on Snapchat. for us, a for monetization, Snapchat's the biggest. Then probably Facebook. But Facebook. With, without saying your earnings, what could someone one can earn make millions? Yeah, a month. Yeah, I have a friend who's making multiple millions a month. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna yeah, do Snapchat. But you, you could also do that on Facebook too. I have I knew a, a, someone who made one point six million and. And a month on Facebook. 1.6 And it was bad content, too. Yeah, you know, I was like, oh, shit. Now, TikTok, uh, I'll disclose this. And okay. once they, they started the creator fund, do you remember that? Yes. And I was one of 17 people out of a billion to be on the first, like, initial thing. And I, uh, to this date, I mean, I have, we have 23 million followers on TikTok. Jeez. And I've made under 30 grand. Total in Why? Three years. Why? Why do you want to brag about how little you've made? Well, I'm saying don't. That's a problem. Don't look. Yeah, don't look at uh, TikTok. And then and he started uh, YouTube started monetization the other day on on made, shorts. Yeah, on shorts. And you made what? Eighty cents. Eighty cents out of like three hundred thousand views. Yeah. So. But but how many uh, so subscribers do you have? Uh, just below three hundred. Three hundred thousand. That's interesting. Yeah, we're we're like making zero money on YouTube and. Snapchat's Dinners. where it's made. And I Facebook, would, I, Facebook too. And now people are making um, there's some big boy money in YouTube. I make the majority of my money off. And YouTube. there's some money you can make on old school YouTube. Yeah, I like, want to be on Snapchat. No. I'm going to go on Snapchat. I yeah. want to be on Snapchat. Well, Help starting, me get on the Snapchat. You're I want to be on Snapchat. Dude, you just no. got to freaking make videos. No, no, I'm not oh, really. Yeah, on personal it. accounts. What like kind of yours, what kind of accounts can make make money yeah. now? What kind of content are you making to get 23? Fighting. Minutes? He fights. He fights his grandmother. <laughs> oh, we do everything. We do. It's like comedy. Comedy skits. We do pranks. We do, you name it. Like I've That's done everything. Cool. We'll do all. When I, you know, run out of uh, content with her, or she wants a break, or whatever, I go film with him, or I go film with all the other castmates. Like we just bounce around town. A lot of clothing. Yeah. You're naked. Like, You're naked yeah, a lot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. interesting. But all comedy based, except like sometimes she'll do some trick shots and like you know fun. And like, do you do stand up too? Do you monetize? I don't. On I've I've no, I'm scared of stand up. Mm. He's not. I'm very not, proud Brandon of you guys and what you can do, and I feel like it's a total lane that I don't even freaking want to dip into. Do you um, get that? How I get that? Like we had Rampage Jackson on uh, my show the other day, who's one of the best to ever do it, and he's like, "Man, I could not do stand up. Terrifies me." I'm like, "Yeah." Terrifies Dude, me you too. fought Fedor. He's fought legends. Yeah, I know. He just talked about winning and getting 18 stitches over his head and a Croatian elbow into the face, and you're afraid of stand-up? I'm not. No, I'm saying a lot of people are. I'm not afraid it? of oh, stand-up. Okay. I love stand-up. Yeah, no. So you do? Okay. Yeah, yeah no, he's I think it's a whole time. different game. I think like what it we're is. doing, I mean, some people have crossed into both paths, but there's not a lot of people that are doing stand-up and doing you know, content creation on like a higher level level I the, guess. the only person I, I know doing it that does stand up who started in stand up but that blew up on youtube and all that stuff but is like a legit stand up comic and can trevor? follow anybody trevor wallace yep that's the only and person because i went to see his stand up and i was like oh shit no trevor's really a good. monster yeah, yeah he's probably the only night. person i know that is, is done both yeah that's what immediately i caught those words out of your mouth yeah so. trevor's very good i know batch he has tried it but i don't know if his though. stand up was ever any good oh uh king yeah. king king uh, king, king, batch, yeah. king batch he, he's funny yeah I haven't he, watched he's different than trevor because trevor he'll, he, he's doing spots like a real comic yeah like, he's, he's good. doing spots around the city 
that and people think he got big off YouTube. He got he started off stand up and then grew a fan base on you know online. But his stand up's legit. Man. Oh, you know it's impressive that he's able to do that. And but he's putting the work in though. Yeah. A, lot, a lot of people who have big followings like you. I'm, I'm not saying you, but a lot of yeah. them go, oh well, we're funny on here. We'll go do stand up. Like, oh, doesn't no, really it doesn't, work. Doesn't, doesn't translate. Doesn't no. work that way. Doesn't translate. Yeah. And and then uh, merch. You make a lot of money on merch. I uh everyone I like to go where everyone's not going. That's kind of my whole strategy no in life. Yeah. No merch. And I'm FTs. I'm working on it right now. I'm working on it. We're working on two things. I finally got talked into it and I'm excited about it. But when everyone starts like getting excited, like, oh, we're making so much on merch, I'm like, that's when I find the Snapchats, right? I find the Facebooks and then no one's on there and I'm like, okay, let me build an audience here. Let me do NFTs. Brendan. No, I never believe you make that. a lot of do you sell a lot of merch? We do a good amount on merch. You too. do a lot, and you have like the, uh, I did the Fighter and the Kid podcast. You have yeah. Fighter and Kid uh, uh, merch, right? We, uh, we used to. Now I have my own brand, Thick Boy. So Thick Boy, Thick, but you have it. You sell merch. I have yeah. merch. I I have like stuff. It's uh, hoodies and things, and you can go to HowieMandel.com, But you don't have to because you're on here, and I'll get you guys stuff. You want a hoodie? Yeah. Do two, I win that two, for beating the grandma? Two yeah, XL. Yeah. I came Perfect. on your podcast. You gave me nothing. I love to see what you do without that that wrist uh, activation. Maybe I can still you think that's it, huh? I think it's it. I think he's done. And, ha and how long time. have you done this, Howie? Uh, HowieMandel.com or with selling merch? Yeah, R right from the right from the like a week ago. So a lot of people start merch because they want to, you know, the money. I I do it for the marketing. And I just love fashion. Like I'll take really? some fashion risk with it. Yeah, yeah. And but I, you didn't I offer really... me anything. I was there. Well, I was in your I building. Know, well, you made fun, I was on you the made fun of the way I dressed. I was like, oh, he's probably not gonna like the merch. Are they knitted pants? Is that what you're selling? And we're we're gonna offer that. No, I'm gonna get you. Oh, there. Oh, they are. Knitted Look at pants. there. There's a picture of that. That was me on the fighter and the kid. And that's... I'm not good with fashion. I'll throw this over there for you. Uh, I'll sit here. Okay. Thank you. No, and I'll get you guys. Some we much. have some. I was wearing it the other day. It's great. Why didn't you give yeah, me? Cool. I've done stuff with you for. Snapchat. I haven't launched my merch yet. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. No one's giving yeah. Howie merch, what? man. It we was get actually the, the, the last time Brendan was here, but for uh, Logan's, great. he yeah. had a, a a fashion moment go viral. Oh, do you remember I, that? I did see that with who, Mike? No, when you were on Logan Paul's podcast, you had a camel oh, toe. Oh my goodness! You had a camel oh, toe. Oh wow! Do you remember that? No, I don't. That's it. You have a what do you call that? A moose? A moose, moose knuckle? Moose knuckle. That's just my don't nuts. That's in this room. That's me nuts. <laughs> That's me nuts. That's those, a vagina. Those jeans, those jeans that's were... a denim vagina. No, those are some big nuts. Big granny, some no, big those nuts. aren't big nuts. That's a denim vagina. No, that's my nut split like that. You know what the <laughs> no, problem? You know what the problem is? The jeans are too tight. No, that's, that's not the, the problem. problem. No, no I'm you, really uh, thinking about myself right now. I know where you're going with this, Howie. My nuts are too big. I that's got, not I, where you're going. What is. size shoes do you wear? Thirteen. Or you know what that means? Giant that means nuts. You, have, you have a giant vagina. <laughs> they always say your shoe Gaping. size is the size of your vagina. And that went viral. This is, this shows you how little I pay attention to. You didn't know that went viral? No, no clue. You can make a shirt out of that. I don't pay merch. attention to any of that. Granny, stuff. look at his. What do you think of that, Granny? Uh, it's okay. No, it's okay. Look, I think, look, look at his eyes. Look. He's right here. When it happens. The, he's got like a camel toe. Head? Do you like his yeah. pants? She can't hear a thing. That's good. You don't good. have to hear. You have to see. <laughs> is it wrong to have your grandmother look at Brandon's vagina? I think I might get her out of here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Turned into OnlyFans. Yeah. yeah uh, Are you so monetized like, on OnlyFans? Well, he wants to start, but I his mom's been kind of getting on him about it. Oh, your mom frowns upon that yeah, stuff? Have you heard about OnlyFans numbers? Yes. Oh, okay. I, I, one of my, uh, she used to be uh, on the show. I encouraged her to do OnlyFans. And three months after, she always resisted, resisted. I'm like, you got to do it. I see the comments. People want to see it? more of you. Her name's Kat, Kathleen. And I go, you got to do OnlyFans. And I think after three months, she's like, I quit because I'm making six figures a month on OnlyFans. And I'm like, I told you. I got fun. a funny story for you. What do you got? We were just we do this thing where we interview like random people, and they, it could be OnlyFans stars, they could have you know be whoever. And uh, we interviewed this girl, and uh, for our Snapchat show. And the next day, the next time we interviewed her, she kept saying, "Can we do another one?" We're like, "How much did you end up making off that episode? What was it? Two hundred fifty thousand dollars." I'm like, well, I would have loved a split of that. Let me get Off my of one of our just ten percent, lady. Yeah. So did wow. you ever interview her again? 
We did, and then it got, it got demonetized. So we oh, were wow. like, yeah. "You got demonetized." Yeah, so I got double fucked on it. <laughs> really? She made a lot of money though. I would think showing Brendan's vagina on this podcast would monetize yeah. it. Would demonetize? Don't you think YouTube's going to demonetize that we show the vagina? I don't think so. It's kind of a woke movement. You don't know my pronouns. Yeah, yeah. No, that was beautiful. All right, uh, this podcast is kind of. Oh, you you sneezed, Granny. He's are allergic. you are you okay? Spray her down. Oh my gosh! You know he I'm gonna end the podcast. <laughs> Brendan, the is it? What do you want to? What do you want to uh, plug? When's this come out? I don't know. It's a, if you're listening to it, it's out now. Okay, that makes sense. Go to what's your website? Uh, thickboy.com. Thickboy.com. You'll have all your comedy dates. Tour dates. I'm in Naples, Bakersfield one night, and then I'm off to Brea one night. Uh, I'm doing a fight campaign with Joe Rogan in Austin this Saturday. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. You and Joe are tight. Super tight, yeah. Super tight. That's my guy. I've never been on his show. No? No. Are you going to any UFC events you said? I don't go to UFC events. No, I'm just doing it. The Jones fight. Oh, uh, that's March 4th. That'd be a good one. Yeah, you should come. We're working with the UFC now. Oh, nice, man. Yeah. Yeah, they're great. Yeah. Oh, I love it. And then uh, you're not doing Super Bowl? Uh, No. I'm Uh, flying back early to watch Super Bowl and the kiddos. Oh, gotcha. Oh, you have family. Yeah. He's got family. He's right in the middle. You just missed the beginning of this, but he's making a girl right now. Wow. In a lab. I didn't know you could do that. In yeah. a lab. Yeah. yeah. Back in her day, you just kind of had to get lucky. She got to guess. Yeah. Certain techniques, I heard. Right. Well, cool. he just uses his sperm to make. Uh, How many kids you got? Uh, two. He wants 10. I want 10. You're fucking around, right? No, I'd love 10, but my girl's not going for it. So So he's just going to p- 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 plant the ten? twins. Ten. I would love 10. Are you trying to be like uh, Nick Cannon? Cannon? Yeah. Wow. It's like we're, we're rewinding the episode. <laughs> yeah. John I mean, doesn't want any kids. He's, oh, I don't want kids. You don't want kids? John? Why? I want an athlete, and I just don't see myself reproducing an athlete. Adopt one. Uh, that is my plan, but when I'm like 40. And, and how I old want, are you now? Um, I'm 15 years there. 25 years old. But I want one at 40. Wait, you're 25 years NBA, old? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you're 15 years from 40, yeah. 40, yeah. yeah so 15 that. years to get right and put that app in now. There's like some weird science behind it. If John has a kid with a average height person, he's still like, was it 25% chance it can be small? No, 50%, 50% chance. Average height, 50% short, and I'm yeah. not taking those odds. My, oh, my buddy Brad Williams is a great comic. He had a baby in that, the uh, regular size. Oh, yeah. You Look at the guy from uh, Game of Thrones. Was yeah, that, kids? Uh, Peter. Yeah, Peter. Peter uh, D- 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 English, D- yeah. D- well, we'll keep Regular the uh, the little uh, person, little person proper, the little person uh, conversation going. I'm going to end the podcast, but you guys continue <laughs> talking about all the the. Uh, I sound like the guy yeah, who, go, go. who's racist, trying not to be racist. I know little I got people. black friends. I know Brad Willen. <laughs> right. I watch Game of Thrones. Yeah. Yeah, Willow, Willow. Yeah, yeah. That was a good movie. A new show coming out. It's a good movie. We man's my favorite on Jackass.